This is Vahid from VRF Education channel and today I'm going to start a new tutorial on design patterns in C++ with the aim of Qt framework. In this session, I'm going to tell you some introduction about design patterns, such as the history of patterns, uh, what is the design patterns in the nature, why should we learn them, and the classification of patterns. And in upcoming sessions, I'm going to pick uh, patterns one by one and show you how to use them by some real examples in C++ language. Design patterns in their nature isn't a sophisticated uh, concept. There are some uh, solutions for some specific problems in object-oriented design. So this is the first prerequisite. You should know all the concept of object-oriented programming in order to be able to use design patterns in your codes. The idea initially described by Christopher Alexander in a book named A Pattern Language, Towns, Buildings, Construction. This book describes a common language for designing the urban environment. And after that, the idea was picked by four authors. They later become famous to Gang of Four. They published a book in 1994, Design Patterns, Elements of Reusable Object-Oriented Software in which they applied the concept of design patterns to programming. The book featured with 23 different patterns solving various problems of object-oriented design. Since then, dozens of other object-oriented patterns have been discovered and the process does not end. So it will be continued in future and more patterns may be discovered in future for programming. And in this tutorial, I'm going to focus on patterns initially introduced by Gang of Four. Now, let's talk about design patterns in more details. Design patterns are typical solutions to commonly occurring problems in software design. They are like pre-made blueprints that you can customize to solve a recurring design problem in your code. So, these are some standard solutions that you can apply to your problems in your code. But pay attention, you cannot just find a pattern and copy it into your code, the way that you do with functions or libraries. This does not work for patterns. Patterns is not a specific piece of code. They are a general concept for solving a particular problem. You can follow the pattern details and implement a solution that suits the realities of your own program. And on the other hand, patterns are often confused with algorithms because both concepts describe typical solutions to some known problems. But there's a little difference here. An algorithm always defines a clear set of actions that can achieve some goal. And on the other hand, a pattern is a more high-level description of a solution. The code of the same pattern applied to two different programs may be different, and it's not true for algorithm. Cooking recipe is somehow like algorithm. You should pass clear steps to achieve a goal. And for patterns, it's more like a blueprint. You can see what the result and its features are, but the exact order of implementation is up to you. Based on this definition, each pattern consists of four different elements. Intent of a pattern briefly describes both the problems and solution in short detail. Motivation further explanations the problems and solutions the pattern make possible. And after that, we have a structure of classes and interfaces also that show each part of pattern and how they are related. This is the most important part of uh, the design. And at last, we maybe have a good example in one popular programming language that make it easier to grasp the idea behind the pattern. So here we are to show the good example for well-known design patterns in C++. The most important question about design patterns that well, most of the time junior ask is why should I learn patterns? I just developing softwares, they are working and I don't even use one single design pattern in my codes. The truth is that you might manage to work as a programmer for many years without knowing about a single pattern. And a lot of people do just that. Even in that case, you might be implementing some patterns without knowing it, or even you don't know the name of this process that you just implement in your code is a pattern. But uh, 
The first reason that I just uh, mentioned it here, it's ubiquitous. And almost every programmer job details or job advertisement that you uh, saw on the internet, they just uh, said that you should be familiar with the design patterns and be able to use them in your codes. So this is the main reason that you should know about design patterns if you want to get a job in a good company. And on the other hand, design patterns are a toolkit of a tried and tested solution to common problems in software design. Even if you never encounter these problems, knowing patterns is still useful because it teaches you how to solve all sorts of problems using principle of object-oriented design. You might already know concept of object-oriented, but uh, you are not able to uh, make use of them correctly. With uh, the learning of uh, design patterns, you are able to know how I can use these concepts in practice. And also, design patterns define a common language that you and your teammates can use to communicate more efficiently. For example, you can say, just use a single tone for that. By the name of a design pattern, you can tell the solution for a problem to your teammates or give them a hint about how to solve this problem. And everyone will understand the idea behind your suggestion and you are not going into details for that specific solution. So these are the main reasons that you should learn patterns. And the last one is the most important ones and also the first one. I think it's very important if you are looking for a programmer a position in some companies. Design patterns are classified into three different categories and also there are a couple of other uh, categories to categorize uh, design patterns but this is the most famous one patterns can be ca uh, categorized by their intent or purpose we have three different uh, categories creational structural and behavioral in creational patterns we provide object creation mechanism that increase flexibility and reuse of existing code for structural patterns uh, this category uh, explains how to assemble objects and classes into larger structure while keeping this structure flexible and efficient. And for the third one, uh, behavioral patterns take care of effective communication and the assignment of responsibility between objects. So each category are responsible for a part of your application. For example, when you want to create some objects and you want not to get into details in your objects or for a structure, you want to relate some objects to each other and uh, the way how you can assemble objects and classes into larger structure and also for behavioral how the objects should be uh, should relate it to each other here we have the catalog of design patterns that categorize in three different categories creational structural and behavioral i'm going to start with creational uh, segments and in the middle of uh, tutorial i'm going to switch to the structural and behavioral and mix the patterns together and tell you one from each categories so for next session i'm gonna pick single tone pattern one of the easiest and most uh, useful patterns in programming and for the end i'm just uh, grabbing my uh, content especially the powerpoint content from these two sites refactoring.gru and tutorialspoints.com these two sites are uh, some good references if you want to read more about uh, design patterns and also other uh, tutorials are in these two sites that you can use. So, till next session and start with singleton pattern in C++. Goodbye.